In this video, we will take a brief look at the Modifiers and Constraints tabs in the Properties window in Blender. The Modifier tab is used to change or modify how your 3D object looks like in a non-destructive manner. That is, the original model will stay exactly the same, but the modifier will carry out mathematical functions to distort and reshape your 3D object to make all sorts of cool stuff. So for example, let's say I select, let's move this because I created this from the previous tutorial. Let's say I select this cube, for example, and I add an, let's choose an array modifier. Array modifier basically is like a duplicate of your original object. So I can create a bit of space between um, the original, or not that much, let's say, let's say that much space between the original object. And you can see it's duplicating the original object. So if I um, increase the count, you can see it does all sorts of cool stuff. So the array modifier is basically a modifier that can duplicate your original 3D object. And it's non-destructive in the fact that if I, if I get rid of it now, let's just turn off the, the visibility, the original object stays exactly the same. So, so I can add as much modifiers as I want. So I may add another array modifier. Maybe put this as zero and put this as, let's say, uh, so not the z-axis, the y-axis, let's say. Actually, let's move it out a little bit more. Um, don't, have to, don't have to understand what the settings does. Just, just know that these modifiers actually modifies your 3D object. So you can create very, very quickly cool shapes and, you know, looks for your 3D object in a matter of seconds. And the modifier is a heavily used tool within Blender. And another popular modifier that's used is the subdivision servers. This is almost always used by 3D artists. And basically what this does is it subdivides the surface in the sense that if I turn this on for a second, you can see that there's eight vertices or eight corners um, subdivision will divide that into for example it will, it will add it will add another vertice here it'll add a vertice here it will add a vertice there and basically double up the total number of vertices and smooth it out so this is generally used to smooth stuff so you can see the more high poly it looks it, lo it looks a lot smoother you can also do the same to a sphere and make it look even smoother so it's used to smooth out stuff and a lot of Pixar characters generally have subdivision servers in them. That's how they look so smooth and so beautiful to look at because they're so smooth and high poly. And, and, but really underneath all that surface, they're not really that high poly because if you turn them off, the original model still stays intact. Next up is the constraints tab. The constraints tab adds restrictions on what can be done to your 3D object. So, for example, you could set a constraint that the cube should not go below the ground, or the cube must always follow another object, like the 3D sphere. This is great for things like restricting the feet from penetrating below the ground, or making a hat object stick to your character's head. So let's do a quick example of that. So let's use our cube as a pretend hat, and we'll stick it to our sphere. A shoddy job, but nevertheless. Now let's add a constraint called child of, and I'm going to make it stick to the sphere. Um, I'm just going to press these two buttons. Basically, I'll pop that back to its original location. So now when I move the sphere, you'll notice that the cube also moves along with it. So we've successfully created a constraint. Oops, let's move that a little bit here. So we've successfully created a constraint that the cube must always follow the sphere. So as you can see, the constraints tab can be used to create a whole lot of cool stuff. And that's pretty much it. In the next video, we will look at materials and textures.